Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, should we be preparing for the winds of change to be blowing very soon? We investigate next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. And thanks as always for making us your first listen. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. With the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to be back with you once again. And on today's episode, we will get to some looking ahead as to what is coming up Saturday, and really otherwise, kind of a lot of looking ahead via some thoughts from Joey McGuire on a bigger picture as it relates to the direction of this program and some of what will be coming fast and furiously very quickly into this weekend, into next week. You've got maneuvers to make as far as uh, signing day. One of them is concerned. You've got portal happenings, obviously wasting no time before that wheel starts turning. So you may think the uh, regular season is winding down, but the frenzy is going to uh, be amped up to a degree. And I want to get into a thought from Red Raider head coach Joey McGuire, kind of talking about looking forward. But in order to do that, he also spent some time sort of reflecting on what the season has been up to this point and some of what that could indicate as far as what is needed to be better in the future. Here's Red Raider head coach Joey McGuire. Uh, this has been a roller coaster this year. I think uh, to to change that, I'll go back to the first two things. We got to be better up front on the offensive line, um, and that's uh, with personnel, and that is with coaching. And then we've got to be better uh, in pass defense. I mean, if you look at our pass defense, I think we're one twenty fifth out of uh, one thirty four. Could be wrong. It could be. 133 out of 134. I know we're 125th of something. I don't know. That might be total defense. I was looking, you know, every morning, uh, every uh, Monday morning, I get the updates of special teams, offense, defense, where we're ranked in the Big 12, where we're ranked. Sean Kinney does that for me. And so I was looking at that. So I think it was 125th or 130. 33rd of 134. So those two right there, you're going to have a roller coaster. If you're not, if you're not good up front on the offensive defensive line, then and don't play well, it's always going to be a roller coaster. It's going to be one score games, um, which it has been, and you know it's going to be nail nail biters, and then you're going to have a game that you're again not supposed to lose that you lose, and then you're going to have a game that you're not supposed to win that you win. You know, and so. It's kind of that stuff like that. We got to keep getting better there. I mean, it's a total program. Everybody look in the mirror and and see how we've got to get better. And and then at the end of the year, um, when really at the end of this week, you know, you really take a step back. And we've been doing this, but like, do do we have to change some place places? Do we have to make some changes, or do we have to make some additions to the staff for us to be better to get over the hump? of playing in a Big 12 championship. Chris, there was some uh, happiness expressed with the win in Stillwater. There was some frustration expressed with some opportunities missed this season. And uh, there was a whole lot of reflection, it seemed like, from Coach McGuire to kick off the week. Yeah, you know, I, I would uh, I would tell you that uh, we are – we're about to get into one of the busiest times of the year as far as, like, if you're into the transactional aspect of football with whether it be coaching or roster movement or whatever, we're, we're on the lip of the cup of, of just kind of keeping your head on a swivel territory uh, as you, as you get near the end of the regular season. Um, a lot of rumors out there about coaching stuff going on elsewhere and transfer this and all that stuff. And uh, um, Texas tech will be certainly in the middle of it, but yeah, I, I think Joey focusing a lot on being frustrated that you're you're not in a better spot as it relates to the the Big Twelve title game, and I think that you know he was asked multiple different ways about why that is or what he has what keeps him up at night, and 
Because if you, if you think about it, you you technically have a much better percent chance of getting to the title game this year than you really ever have before. Okay, like ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you you've typically gotten even in 08, You you like I mean it was zero percent chance uh, going into your last week of of going to the title game. I think um, so. Uh, it's just. Uh, because of the way the league was constructed and, and, and all that stuff and, and everything. So yeah, you've got, you've got a three or four more percent chance uh, this year than you, than you ever have before, which is uh, I guess something, but <laughs> <Get him laughs> on a black. yeah, that's right. But I, I think his comment was, there's a really good chance that you could, you could see Arizona state and Iowa state playing for the league title. And he said, we'd be both of them. And they did a better job of taking care of their business elsewhere as we went along than, than we did. And why is that? And I think that's when it, you know, kind of upon reflection, we've just got to be better. Look, we, we've beaten this horse a lot. Uh, we've pointed it out. The head coach has pointed it out. It's just, it is what it is. You're just not as good as you would like to be or need to be up front on the, the offensive line. It is going to be a heavy emphasis uh, with, what happens, you know, when the portal window opens and all those things, but you just need to be better because you can't you can't necessarily control games uh, uh, this way. It doesn't matter what play you're calling. Wow, why don't we throw it deeper? Well, can you protect long enough? Why don't you run it better? Well, can can you block well enough? Yeah, sometimes yes, a lot of times no. You know, uh, yeah. call it what it is. <clears throat> um, and yet you still have put out a really good offensive product. The other thing is pass defense. Cowan, there are 133 Division I schools that the NCAA lists ranking-wise. You rank 132nd. So, Would it make you feel any better if I told you that half of those schools don't even <laughs> deserve to be in that category because they play in a group of five conference? So technically, we're maybe 65th. Okay, okay. I always Touché. hated the way they do statistical rankings. It makes no freaking sense whatsoever. To combine everybody on that list makes no difference. As I, I, yeah, that's I, just I a, a personal grievance of mine <laughs> with how we view statistical rankings. But so. you're you're giving up you're giving up 309 yards a game through the air. The the let's see, I'll just tell you. Um, the worst school in the country is Tulsa. They just fired their head coach. They're giving up 318. Oh, in your general vicinity, uh, Wake Forest, 130, Oklahoma State, 127, Stanford, 126, Boise State's up there, West Virginia also up there. They're only giving up 260. Anyways, you you get the idea. Um, this isn't this isn't where you want to be, um, you know, obviously. And so he pointed to because I mean, you let me tell you something interesting. This is sobering. Five. Of the 11 quarterbacks that you have played this season, five of them have won one of their conference's weekly awards the next week, including the guy you just faced who's newcomer of the year, the the, the freshman in Oklahoma State. So you, you follow what I'm saying? Five, oh, yeah. of the, five of the 11 quarterbacks that you have faced this year have gone on on that Monday to be honored by their league for what they did <laughs> Um, and, and all that. And I don't think that includes like what the Pac-12 was doing and John Mateer, although he had a monster game against you because I don't think they're in a position to really give out conference awards and all that stuff because there's just two schools. <laughs> so that didn't even include him. But uh, yeah, I had a I, – I, I just uh, – that's, uh, that's a bit sobering. Um, yes, it is. So I mean, I should have told you again. I was sober when I showed up. I didn't need the sobering. I know. Yeah, (laughs) but 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 somebody in the audience did. And and you you are young over there on that side. Um, but you just and and you knew replacing Rabbit was going to be difficult. But you you would have to, you know. I think it's a fair question to ask aloud. Is this group better now than they were six weeks ago? Have there has there been improvement? Are they like, oh, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Or is it still some of the same, you know, and I think Joey even talked about we don't tackle well enough. And that maybe it was, it was Tim DeRuder that said it. We don't tackle well enough. I think it was Coach DeRuder, the defense coordinator. Yeah, tackling has been an issue in the open field with our DBs, and our eye discipline is still bad. And he kind of said, I've got to be better there. And he goes, it's ultimately up to Coach McGuire, the greatest, but we're still having some of the same issues. 
And, you know, I mean, obviously Oklahoma State just went for over 500 yards against you, and they their quarterback threw for over 300 in his first career start. So, anyway, um, th- those are – and I think the offensive line issues, uh, Cowan, were – because he, he talked about – I may get some of these names wrong, but he talked about the names of Daniel Sill and Dylan Shaw um, – like the freshman Holton Hendricks, Jacob Ponton, Ellis Davis, uh, Nick Fadig was also a redshirt freshman. Where there's other ones are true freshmen, and 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 he does leave a few names out, which I thought were interesting amongst those groups, which tells you kind of where your where your standing is. And I mean, here, here's the thing: Maurice Rodriguez was a big, you know, a big get for you uh in the offseason and it was a supply and demand issue he was one of the last guys left out there but Cowan he didn't even travel to Stillwater he wasn't even on the sideline yeah that's just that's that was a a bit of a miss but it was because he was one of the remaining few out there when you're portaling and you need somebody and that was you know um obviously Vinny Scurry's been out but I just I think what Joey was talking about, about the offensive line needs to improve is I just don't know if we're ready to hand the baton to the Fadigs, the Pontons, the Davises, the Hendrixes, and all that. We're just not – I mean, that that's 18, 19 years old versus 23, 24. And in a weight room and, and all the stuff, because we talk about those examples of those true freshmen that have been – that have played offensive line for you before, every one of them was physically – ready to roll, and they were all NFL guys. I just don't know if any of these, as good as you may think they'll be, check those boxes yet. Um, and it comes down to mass and strength and and, and all those things uh, at this point. So hence the reason you may go portaling there. Yeah, and as he mentioned, the, those are the places where um, you achieve consistency as a team or you don't, and you ride the roller coaster, uh, as he talked about, and we've mentioned – obviously several times this year. Were you surprised at all to see him? It was kind of just off the cuff, him asking aloud. So I don't, you can tell me if I'm making too much out of it, but were you surprised at all to see him kind of veer into the thought of staff changes um, with a week left to go in the season? And I I only put it in that context because I think there was a time, once upon a time when we were young, innocent little college football children where you thought, okay, you get all your games out of the way and then you see what you're going to do differently for next year. But now you don't get all your games out of the way. You get right into like, hey, I need this recruit to maybe know what the future of his position coach or who that's going to be is going to look like or this portal guy. Or so, are you surprised to hear him mention that, or am I just antiquated to think, wow, that was that seems kind of early? First, today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Never sweat buying tickets to your favorite event again with game time it's always a breeze using the game time app where you're going to find the best last minute deals and i love being able to scout out of you from any seat before pulling the trigger of course you're always doing it at the lowest price guaranteed game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it begins which means you can finish off that final brat that final beer at your own pace at the tailgate because game time is the place to find last minute seats to any event game time gives you the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets but not just fast also secure and simple to use so right now download the game time app and create an account and use our promo code locked on college for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms do apply again create an account and redeem our code locked on college for twenty dollars off download the game time app today for last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed so were you surprised to hear him mention that, or am I just antiquated to think, wow, that was that seems kind of early to be talking? So about. as we as we look at the sport, um, and, and is is interesting because Joey was asked a question, something about the timing of everything, and he said, you know, I was coaching. I think it was maybe about signing day coming up next week, but he said, I've been coaching college football for eight years now. It's my eighth season to be in college. Um, this is third year at Tech. He was at Baylor for five years. And he's like, when I first started this deal, we just, when I, you know, first got in college, we, there was just the one signing date. And you think about, I think he, he, he phrased it in that college football has maybe changed more in the last eight years as far as the way it's, it's operated and all the stuff that's gone on more in the last, you know, eight years. We'll just use that time frame compared to the previous 100. Yeah. 
you know, and but this is a byproduct of it is that because you have early signing date, which is even earlier now, I mean, because they're, they're, you know, this is the first year. Let me make sure I have the date right. Um, this is going to be December the 4th, I believe, is when signing date is. The portal opens on the 8th or the 9th, I think. But used to be the the signing day would have been on, like traditionally, it would have been on like the 18th of December. I say traditionally, uh, tongue in cheek, because that was uh, the tradi- tradition all of about, what, five to six years. Uh, so short-lived tradition. <laughs> uh, but they moved it up just because of the playoff and then you're trying to separate the national Sunday and all that. I'm just throwing that all out there to say to you, you can't wait. You, you, you know, if you, if you're, if you're talking about doing this or that, this is why it's actually been some somewhat surprising. We've had, uh, we, we've had not, not had many coaching changes out there in the ether uh, this season. I think a lot of that has to do with revenue sharing, but you're, you're seeing, I mean, Chris Kleiman's been asked about, hey, man, are you retiring? Mike Gundy's been asked, hey, are you you back next year? Kyle Whittingham's been asked, you know, there's, you know, are you retiring? He's like, yeah, we'll, we'll wait after the season. That's Friday, dude. Um, we'll, uh, for the Utes anyway, there's a video circulating uh, that, that was taken of Neil Brown and his family and somebody wrote above it. I'm not a body language expert, but it sure looks like there's a lot of emotions going on here. Is this their last game? uh at home and and all all, so i i again i just offer all that up to say that i just don't i i think that when things like changes happen it it all happens quickly it has to uh just because of all the acquisitions from a player standpoint and you've got to turn the page and move on and some of this takes a bit to process and there's a domino effect and and not everything is always Hunky dory as far as okay, I got everything done. Finally, we can uh, I can lay my head on the pillow and everything's good. I got my roster, I got my staff, I'm good to go. That's not necessarily what I'm hinting at in that. When that's is rare. that day? Exactly, is that like just one single day in the middle of I July mean, or something. Or the portal window closes on December the 28th, and I, as I'm sitting here and as I say that, there's some coach and probably a lot that are going to be sit there on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day texting, FaceTiming, trying to get some kid to switch. God. I, but this is where we're at, man. Yeah. Um, so I'm not surprised that that Joey, um, you, you know, something will have to change here. Um, I think that you're, you're statistically and otherwise, you're just at the bottom of the rankings and just bottom points given up. Uh, passing yards given up, uh, you, you know, just, I mean, you know, so, whether it's the, what you're teaching, the scheme that you're employing, the roster, the staff, I mean, you know, and he even meant, mentioned a, a, like additions. I think that was a, a, a that word was that I was interested. Yeah. He's like, okay. we need to figure out if we need to change our staff, make some additions to it. Consultants. Um, <laughs> exactly. And, and, Bring and the list of fired head coaches and let's talk consultants. <laughs> that's right. And, and that, that's exactly right. Uh, so I, I think that you just, you know, as we come to the end of the season, you just have to keep your head on a swivel uh, with, with everything going and don't be surprised by anything. Um, and w- even those of us that are kind of close to it, if you think you kind of have a great feel for what's going on, sometimes you don't, you know, and, uh, but I, th- I think Joey is trying to get this program to Arlington, Texas in early December. And if he feels, I think he said his co- his direct quote was, it is my obligation and my duty as the head coach here to try to field the best team that I can. And that includes roster and staff and and, and everything. And there's financial things that come into play and there's, you know, financial things that come into play. There's all kinds of stuff that, that come into yeah. play uh, as far as all that goes. Um, you know, but I think uh, that's where he's coming at it from. So I don't know. We'll see. You, you think you got everything under control and you can hit the snooze alarm. Nothing's going to be going <laughs> on. And then Ted Liggett shows up in camo coveralls to the county courthouse. And all of a sudden there's news. Um, Chris, I look. Where were you on that day? 
Uh, yeah, were I, you were you in the studio that day when we were breaking all that down? When that I really was. happened? What your, I yeah, was. And I, I was. None in, of what I said is fiction. That all actually happened. So yeah, I was in San Antonio, <laughs> Texas, already on site where the bowl game was. You were back. Uh, you were back at the station. Yeah. We're talking about when when Mike was, I guess, fired. Whatever and, we were allowed to call it, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, whatever, however you want to phrase it. That was some of the darndest <laughs> days that I've ever endured. Yes, it was. I yes, mean, it was. yeah. So um, yeah, you 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 mentioned that from a point of like you weren't just that wasn't off the cuff. That really happened. Yeah, wasn't on the bingo card, and yeah, that wasn't yeah. fiction. That was real. Um, look, we all know that the defense statistically has been awful. Uh, we all know that the defense, uh, in comparison to their offensive counterparts, <clears throat> has been the uh, lesser achieving group this year. There's no question about it. But I'm thinking about, you know, like staff changes. It's not so clear to me that there's just an immediate, like, defensive coaching scapegoat. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle all the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers can bet only $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL and a whole lot more all in one place. So when you get a hunch, a gut instinct in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more all on the same page where you place your bet. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a gut feeling again and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. It's not so clear to me that there's just an immediate like defensive coaching scapegoat to go axe because I think your problems are far more based in Jimmy's and Joe's than the wrong coach being under the headset. Part of that is because of what you have done defensively in the first couple of years in the McGuire tenure when you had better players, both on the front end and the back end. Uh, and the other part of that, Chris, is – I don't know. I still think pretty highly of Tim DeRuiter as a uh, a college defensive coach. I don't think he forgot how to call great plays or to scheme up, you know, defending an offense or to convey that to his athletes. I do not think you had the players. Um, I think you had less impactful ones than you had in the previous two years. There were some standouts, obviously, but um, I don't think I have to explain this to everybody. It's obvious to anybody with eyes. So I don't – it's not so – immediate to me to just be like yeah well you got to make a change defensively you got to get rid of a coach here because it was just an awful year and maybe you do i, I don't know but i'm not one yeah, of those we guys don't know. Pulls the plug for the sake of pl uh, pulling it yeah so we, I, and we I don't, don't know because he also mentioned offensive line and i don't think you're gonna do anything there because clay just got here i yeah, mean and did. it's not and i think that's a jimmy's and joe's problem too I agree. um you know, in the in the previous two years, defensively, you were really old on that side of the ball, yeah. uh, and you had you had NFL guys uh, back there. You, you know that this is a fact. You had Tyler Owens, and you had Rabbit, uh, more specifically, at Tyree Wilson. You had Miles Cole. You had a lot of NFL. Uh, you know, in Bradford and Hutchings, which were not necessarily bona fide NFL guys, they were old guys, and so it's it's up to. You know, do, do, you, do you change the scheme? Are you trying to do too much? You're not doing enough. Uh, is there enough juice on that side of the ball? I don't know. I'm just – If it know, is a player problem, maybe you go try and get an ace recruiter. I don't know. I'm sure all of it's easier yeah. said than done, but maybe – Exactly. You know, but I, I just – he kept harping on the pass defense. And, and again, yeah. I get it. I mean, like we, we saw it Saturday. You couldn't stop anybody. Yes. We did. I mean, you, you, you had a really difficult time. They ran trick plays. They ran it at you. They threw it at you. They, um, we've seen it since week one. Since yeah, week one, we've yeah. seen that. And it's not just based in pass defense, meaning defensive backs alone, but also your inability to pressure an opposing quarterback. I mean, which that, which is kind of chicken to the egg. Yeah, um, into um, and all, all, all those things. And 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 again, there's. Uh, I think. You know, as you finish that game, you're without your top three defensive tackles, you know, because due to Banks, yeah. we've already forgotten about him. And then you don't have DB, uh, Carroll, or Quincy Ledette to finish that game. Those are your, your, your basically your, your two starters and top backup um, the bulk of the season prior to them getting hurt. So you're kind of in some second, third string guys. But 
Um, I don't know. So I, I just uh, I think it'll be interesting to kind of you know see what what changes they will make because something will change. That that is a fact, mm-hmm. and Joey's telling you this. Um, we've got to get better there. We've got to change something, and we'll see what that is uh, because it's just. And I know offensive line wise and defensive line wise and secondary wise, they are going to try to acquire um, some, and we'll get into that uh, later in the week, but that, that'll be part of it. But is it, we got to tweak something here. Uh, we, we gotta, we gotta, cause they have it, they have it in them. I mean, there, there's been a few games where it's like, it's looked pretty good, but it's just not been consistent enough. And that's the problem is like you, you're, I mean, it, yeah. They are as much of the roller coaster as anything. The Judge Roy scream or the shockwave or whatever our favorite roller coaster is. They, the defense has been kind of this, you know, because you see glimpses. And again, I always joke around here where it's like we're trained to like figure out what's all wrong with the offense and what's right with the, the defense. But other than Jacob Rodriguez, is there anything that you can hang your cowboy hat on just to, you know, use, uh, use Jacob Rodriguez a little bit more? Is there anything that you go, this is good. This group, this this um, yeah. aspect, or they do this well. I mean, you tell me. I will not because I don't have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I do think I think CJ Baskerville's had a really good season. Um, yeah, no, it, I, I don't. Little, it, it really and, looks, and not a, not yeah, enough. There's, there's a couple of individuals that have made some impacts, but you need a whole lot more, and you need it in playmaking positions. You need guys to get after the quarterback, and you guys to take the football away. Um, before we get out of here, Chris, we've mentioned the word consistency. We've mentioned the word change. And these are things that we have uh, seen and can utilize in various ways with your quarterback position. I want to approach this like a fawn in the wild. I don't want to scare it away. I don't want to spook it. I don't want to jinx it. But you haven't seen change there. You have seen consistency there. And by God, I'll be damned. I swear we're creeping up on the 12th game with the same story, starting quarterback ready to start it. Now, you correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm missing anything here, but this has been uh, quite the rare treat for Texas Tech football fans in recent years. So if nothing else, <laughs> I'm going to be thankful this Thanksgiving week uh, to have had that kind of luck with that particular position this year. Yeah, and, and you remember how much we touched on this uh, back in August, oh, and yeah. really, I guess June, July, and the whole deal, and and especially so, viably. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> and, and especially so when we're talking about it in terms of this is a quarterback that was shut down midway through the spring, uh, which which added another layer to it, and, and 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 everything, and then you've got the PTSD from really the the previous decade plus. But if I tell you that he starts all 12 games and he should later this week start his 12th one, um, a minor hiccup there in Fort Worth that you dodged a bullet on, so he didn't he didn't finish that game. Um, but, I mean, you're talking about a QB that's thrown for, you know, close to 3,000 yards. Um, he's got basically close to uh, a four-to-one touchdown to interception ratio. It's not quite, it's maybe closer to three and a half to one, but still, if I tell you all these things, you you're you're everybody's taking it. Everybody's going, sign me up. This oh, is yeah. hell yeah. Um, and I don't I don't know if it's gonna equal a seven win season or an eight win regular season. And and as we've discussed, you still have a very minute chance to make it to Arlington. I mean, I guess you needed it to be just a titch better. Um I, I think that it's it's uh, we're sitting here, you know, and it, is it is it fair to be too critical of of Baron when you've got some legit numbers that he's offered up when we're sitting here talking about how much the offensive line has struggled? I don't know. So, um, but I, I I think that as we've gone along here, it's been a point that I know for me, I've kind of like, oh yeah, I'll be damned. Yeah, he's played every. You know, every game of this year, he's going to end up starting every single game of the regular season. This is a bit of a unicorn. Like, this is Bigfoot <laughs> trotting out there wearing the number two jersey on, on Saturday. Holy cow. How sad uh, that we feel I, that way, but that's the reality. That is the reality. And so I just wanted to uh, make sure that we uh, we kind of touched on that because I, I just, as I've gone through it, I just hadn't 
like thought about it in those terms. But I knew you would like the results if this is what you would get. And I'm still not convinced. My Baron says one thing. I think Joey says the same thing. I'm still, my eyes tell me I'm still not convinced he's 100% healthy. That's just me. Um, I just think there's a few too many, you know, and some of the deep throws, some of the, this or that. I just, I just don't know. We'll never know. Um, I, I, I don't guess, but I just uh, throw that out there. But his numbers are pretty good, and he doesn't get talked yeah. about amongst the top tier of signal callers in the Big Twelve. And uh, I don't know. Maybe you needed one more big win. Uh, I don't know. But you know, he, I, I think the winning thing is part of it. Um, passing completion percentage not great. It still has not been a real big play offense, even though it's been bigger play oriented than it was a season ago. I think he's still like single digits as far as uh, average yards per attempt, things like that. So you've had to grind some things out. But Baron Morton has not been your limiting factor as a team. I don't buy that by any stretch. I mean, 25 to 7 TD to interception ratio, uh, that'll cook anywhere in the country. So I think he's had a fine season. And it's worth mentioning, I, this has been about three weeks ago or so, so this is not updated. But at one point, you were second in the country in drops. Is that right? I haven't looked at that number. Yeah, wow. second in the country in drops. Because um, you remember uh, earlier on in the season, remember halfway, that there, there was way too many of those. And I don't, yeah. I don't know how – it's some of the analytics websites do. I don't know how they constitute a drop, but you know that that factors into his stuff too, from a completion percentage standpoint, um, and, and all that. Um, you know, and there's definitely some throws that he would love to have back, and and, and all that. But yeah, I, I think that that's uh, that's well stated. I think he deserves uh, his flowers, and we'll see kind of how he how he finishes up here uh, on uh, uh, you know in the regular season on Saturday. So. And I, you know, I don't mean to make too much of it, but, you know, total yardage, things like that, they're nice, but I'm always for a quarterback honed in on that touchdown to interception ratio. And he by far is going to give you your best effort in those categories that you've had in several years. You were like 23 to 12 and some combined action between he and Shuck a season ago, get into some uh, Tyler Shuck, Donovan Smith action. You're like 19, 18 to 13, something like, I mean, it's just, you, you have advanced in that area. And if for nothing else, uh, I'd give him a pat on the back for that. So we're going to go into it with the same uh, signal caller this last time around, at least as it relates to the regular season for the first time in a long time. Do you have that number off the top of your head? Are we going back to 13? Are we going back to Patrick Mahomes? Well, it was, you know, uh, did did, Sh- did Shimanek do it in like 16 maybe? I think we had a Shimanek here maybe. Yeah, I, I think that's <laughs> right. You know, but it, it, it's – it, this is and, and then Mahomes did it too, but he was he was he had an AC sprain, you know, when he was playing through it, and one of the years he was here. So I think he started, you know, it, it's. But I, I think it's like like nine out of eleven or ten out of eleven Oof. years where you've gone where you had to start more than one quarterback in like meaningful games and, and things like that. So and we've been dipping into not just two but three. 3.5 yes. in some recent years. So. Yeah, and, and Joe, Joey was asked, like one of the questions he was asked this week too was about <laughs> like how do you assess your player development or how do you assess like you, you know, your, your, your standing at the end of year three and all that stuff. And he's like, well, you know, we've had to play way too many quarterbacks here. Um, and, and, and he's just looked, talking big picture. Yeah. And that's when the question came up. It's like, man, coach, what's it like to have Baron about to start his 12th game? And then I was just like, oh, yeah. I, I kind of just it just kind of <laughs> snuck up on me because you're so used to and and there after the TCU game you thought damn man Will Hammond's gonna have to start at Iowa State I know yeah you know and and he didn't thankfully um, <laughs> so anyway there'll be time for Will Hammond in the future but uh, it's been enjoyable at least in my humble estimation uh, to see the Red Raiders have that position manned by the same guy throughout the year and God help me I'm knocking on every piece of wood I got here in the office. Not looking to jinx anything this week. Hopefully, he's not out wakeboarding or anything like that uh, before we get down to the Duchendorf Cup on Saturday. All right, Chris, great stuff as always, man. Appreciate the insights. And we got plenty still to get to this week and rolling into the weekend. Going to be very, very busy on all these fronts we are mentioning on this episode. So make sure you're subscribed out there on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you miss nothing. Chris, thanks for the time as always, man. We'll see you for the next one. Absolutely, man. Uh, Keep hope alive, everybody. uh, And keep that head. On a swivel. That's right. Hands up. Talk to you. <laughs> Appreciate you guys for being out there, especially those everydayers. Shout out to you.
for being there once again. And shout out to the Matador Mobsters. Hit the show notes, find the link to become one of those. If you are interested, you can try on a free 14-day trial to see how it suits you. It's your direct line to Chris and myself with one-on-one text sent straight to your phone. For Chris, I'm Casey. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.